right here we have a lower cast um, just outlining where you'd make the tray so as you can see here I've drawn over the freely which are quite clear you need to be clear freely you need to draw a line where you attached unattached mucosal junction can be seen on the cast normally and you make sure you don't extend the tray beyond that all the way back external break ridge now the critical in this case is on the other side because you can see here I've guesstimated and you can't expect the technicians to do this you have to look in the mouth where the external brick ridge runs if you take the tray beyond there the denture beyond there you cause the patient pain and the denture will be unstable cover the retromotor pad malahide line you won't be able to see but the sulcal depth there should have been defined by your primary if your primary is underextended you're going to struggle at this point the other critical bit is lingual frenum area we've got a bifurcated frenum here and you can see that there it's getting slightly close this is tricky because I have to hold this in the middle of the frame you can see the frenal area you cannot afford to squash the frenal area otherwise again you'll just get problems so lingually on the other side you just take the tray short of the sulcus so you can add green stick to get the functional sulcal depth. Don't let your tray dictate the lingual sulcus. So there we have it. Lower tray outlined. Make sure it's short. It's no good using the two millimeter under extension rule because it's not always appropriate. If your impression significantly overextended, tray being two millimeter short is still going to be too big. So I hope that's useful.